Welcome to Horror Score. We're your hosts, uh, Jesse and... Stop. Stop. What's the matter? That's, you can't, what so we the mask, you just, you can't hear like a word you're saying. I don't know when on Halloween the mask has ever been a good idea by the end of the night. Yeah, but it, it looks really cool. You want me to take it out? Yes. Ugh. There he is. Have you ever worn a mask on Halloween? You probably have. Um, it's the worst thing, but you wouldn't know it going to a costume shop because there's walls of masks everywhere and people still buy them. Even though everyone knows wearing a mask at a party for more than like a minute for a photo becomes the worst. Hey man, that mask is really great. It looks really cool. Thanks, I'm dying and this is filled with sweat. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's really, can I try it on? No, don't try that mask on. You don't want to touch it. it is, I have to burn it actually. Yeah, it is really wet on the inside. Um, yeah, it's, it's tough. Um, I bought this costume for Halloween this year and uh, fortunately I bought this as well and I was able to wear that into the parties and... And then kind of throw this on. Oh. Okay, we're back. Um, Maybe we should do that intro over again. All right. Here goes. Welcome to Horror Score. We're your hosts, Jesse and... Vanessa. And this week's episode is... The Barn. Which I had never heard of before. 2016 not rated movie. And you, have you seen this? No. This was both of our I've first watch. now. I've now seen we've seen it. By it. Now. We've definitely seen it now. <laughs> Um, yeah, this movie brings to, oh, don't get confused. After this review, if you decide to check this out, this is not the 2018 movie with the exact same name, The Barn. Different movie. And this one actually scored way higher on IMDb than the other aforementioned movie. Anyway, going on. Any opening remarks about The Barn you want to get out of the way? It was directed by Justin M. Seaman. Um... He had actually made a short film in high school in 2002 about like a, like a childhood story he made about the boogeyman and um, just directly relates to his main um, boogeyman, minor barn gatekeeper guy that's in this movie. We get three monsters in this movie too. Yeah. And it's, it's sort of like a made up urban legend, right? Because I've never heard, have you heard anything like... No. Okay, yeah, so it's like an urban legend that everyone's supposed to know about, except we don't, because we don't live in this version of the world um, where there's these, like, three avatars of Halloween. You've got who? The the Boogeyman Miner that you mentioned, uh, the Candy Corn Scarecrow, and Hollow Jack. Yep. And uh, I guess the the legend says if you walk up to a very specific barn. It can't be any barn. It has to be the one super haunted barn and you knock on it, they will kill you. I guess it's sort of like the puzzle box from Hellraiser. If but you there are a lot box. of rules. That wasn't like the only rule. Right. The only Halloween rule. It's one of those classic horror films where they let you know basically what the rules are very early in the movie because there's that one kid, there's that one person that's really stringent about the Halloween rules and everybody nags him you like, you like seventeen, man. Like, you're like graduating next year. You still believe in all this Halloween stuff? You still like go trick or treating? It's like, yeah, nine times out of ten, in a horror movie. That guy's gonna save your ass. So. Mm. So does it happen in this movie? We're gonna find out. Uh, anything else you want to mention before we get into scoring this film? No. Okay. Well, here on Horror Score, we rate movies over five categories for a total of 20 points per category, potential 20 points per category. And our first category is story. Um, even without taking the story uh, into account, this movie does a thing that I'm a fan of because I enjoy having my childhood like packaged and resold to me, where this movie <laughs> pretends that it's an old movie, sort of like uh, Lost After Dark, um, Stranger Things. Um, I think that the production value like of the camera quality is a little too high. They do some fake cigarette burns. Which is interesting burns. because it's a it's a yeah. it's a low budget film. <laughs> yeah, there's just like you know you can tell it's not quite the old quality that some of the older films had. But um, I like it. I like that style. Um, 
in, in a lot of ways it works. There's a couple ways that it doesn't. But this is uh, the filmmaker, uh, you said, Justin, Justin M. Seaman. Seaman. He hasn't done a whole lot of movies uh, yet. And this is one of his, his early films. And I liked it. Some of the dialogue I thought was sort of bad. But I like the overall story. Uh, every once in a while the dialogue took me out. Um, but I gave it a nine. I gave it a nine in story overall. And that's why. What about you? I gave it a ten. Um, they, and the, you know, they're they're about to graduate high school. Like they're about to get into their senior year, basically. Um, and they go to this. They're on their way to this concert, and they stop so that he can trick or treat, basically, and get candy from the town right before where the concert is. And they never go to the concert. They it's it's they stop for a really long time, and I'm like, the concert's over now, guys, and you guys are in this small town outside of a barn. <laughs> like, yeah, they had a big night planned. You know, they were gonna go sit around a fire yeah, in the they woods. They acted like they loved that band, but they didn't. <laughs> and that the the host that was hosting Doctor Doctor Rock was Ari Lehman, uh, mm-hmm. who's the original, the original Jason piece. Voorhees, not like jumping into the community. yeah the kid one, the kid one they like you know at the, the end great of Tom the first Feeney. one. Yep, yeah, that's right, the prosthetics on him. Uh, I met him, he came to the Seacoast Repertory Theater um, just to, like, hang out and play the set with his band uh, a couple years back. Um, And one of the characters, Russell, by the way, uh, like I said, some of the dialogue is just a little strange, um, but Russell, who is, like, 17 or 18 years old, is pumped about Ding Dong Ditch. Like, he's, like, genuinely, like, really excited about, like, yeah, this Halloween's gonna be awesome. We're gonna go ring some doorbells and run best. away. Like, so gonna... what? <laughs> it's gonna be, like, last year to better. Because we're older now. Yeah, more doors. <laughs> oh, <I see. laughs> so let's, uh, let's get into a category that I think is a really good category for this movie. Villain. Do you want to start us off on Villain, Vanessa? Sure. Take it away. Okay. There are three villains in this. There's like a, a, a minor type with a skeleton face, and that is the boogeyman. And then there is the hollow jack, who is like the guardian of like the pumpkin patch, basically. Um, and then there's the candy corn scarecrow, who is the harvest guard, yeah. basically. Yeah. Um, unexpectedly, the candy corn scarecrow has so much personality and the biggest dope laugh I've ever heard. <laughs> he's, he's just killing this chick who has just taken a shirt off. So she broke that rule basically. So she um, was being killed and he just, he has this dumb like Lenny laugh from like a mice and men. <laughs> it's like, uh, anyway, he gets... At least 10 points out of me, okay. and then two points for the other two guys. <laughs> so it's 12. <laughs> um, I, gave, I gave the villains a 13. Um, I wish there was a little bit more. Like, they looked a lot different. Uh, the pumpkin, the hollow jack, what I thought was really cool about him is he's got a pumpkin for a head, and the eyes and the he's mouth. he got a cabbage for a head. <laughs> They're always on fire. And I think most of the time it was real fire. Like, I don't think there was CGI fire. I think that... That was CGI fire. I don't know. I think it was real fire. That was effects fire. Well, you know, that effect fire looked so good that I thought that maybe... I was like, are they lighting this mask on fire before every take? Um, But I wish... Like, because he has powers. He has the ability to, like, hop from pumpkin to pumpkin. Like, you can't kill him. If there's any pumpkins in who knows how far of a, a radius... You, you smash his head and he'll just come back in another pumpkin. But I felt like the Candy Corn Scarecrow and the Boogeyman Miner didn't have, like, a thing that was theirs. Excuse me. Um, the Candy Corn <laughs> Scarecrow had the power of charisma. Mm. And Grace, um, I would have a beer with him. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I like these three villains, but I'm afraid that they're not coming back in the sequel. Uh, I looked on, I was looking around at IMDb, and I saw that there's going to be a The Barn 2, which comes out in 2021. The Stable. 
the electric Barnaloo. Um, <laughs> but none of the villains from this movie were listed on the cast, but it did say things like... <laughs> It said things like Afro zombie, clown zombie, astronaut zombie. So I feel like we're not going to see these villains again, sadly, because I like them. And they grow on me throughout the movie. Um, and I think that this movie is going to be better after like watching it a second and third time. I think that this might be one of those movies where you watch it the first time and you're like, okay, pretty good. But I gave these villains a 13 if I had not mentioned that yet. You did. Okay. Well, um, let's let's move into the next category. Horror. Do you want to start us off or do you want me to start us off? It don't matter. It don't matter? All right. We'll get there. I mean, I just talked, but I'll go. This movie, congratulations, because there are at least 21 on-screen deaths, no two of which are and the same. And they're very creative. Yeah. Yes. They, they, a lot of thought went into the yeah. how of the deaths. It, now... Was every one of these deaths, like, super amazing? No. But many of them were, like, got a laugh out of me or a reaction, like, oh, that was cool. Like, you know what? I haven't seen that death in 12 or 13 years. That guy was bobbing for apples. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yes. That was so memorable. You want to tell everybody about that one? I don't want to ruin it. We can tell them about this Okay. One. All right. Tell so them about it. So, he, one of the, one of the, the, um, evil, evil spooky people grabs this guy who is in the middle of bobbing for apples and he pulls his head up and rips this apple out of his mouth and all of his teeth are in the apple <laughs> and then he dunks his head in the water and you get like a below the water shot of it just all turning red and like drowning him and it was it was a lot <laughs> so even though this movie is a comedy horror it doesn't always take itself seriously. I still gave it 14 points. And I think it's it's sort of hard to pull that off. I think Evil Dead does it. I'm sorry. Uh, Army of Darkness does it very well. The whole, like, there's a lot of comedy in it, but it still manages to be a horror movie. And I think this is, it's probably the best thing that this movie does is even though there's some story plot uh, issues that you might have, you always, you keep getting these, like, awesome deaths that bring you back into the movie. And you're like, that's right. I'm watching a comedy horror anyway. Uh... And look at that cool death. This person just got their head cut in half this way. And the brain is here. And there's all sorts of stuff spraying out. Which I think the censors would have come down on them for if this movie was rated. And so they got to do a lot of stuff that you might not have gotten to have seen if it was an R. Or definitely not PG-13. I gave horror 16 points. All right. Because there, like, there was so much gore. There was an entire party of bloodletting, basically. <laughs> and it was because, and I and I like when when films closely follow their own rules, it was be, and all the people who died weren't following rules in one <laughs> way or another. Do you want to take us into effects? Sure. I gave effects 15, oh, here comes Stevens. Here he comes. So, uh, Vanessa, would you please take us into effects? Yes, I gave effects 15 points. Okay, that's another good. High, another high score in this category. Um, there was a kick-ass, like, 80s rock soundtrack, but no, like, <laughs> memorable names. This is kind of like a classic 80s horror film soundtrack in the sense that, like, maybe, like, one in ten films, you've got this big, like, Alice Cooper song or something. But for the most part, it's a bunch of, like, no-name no um, 80s rock bands. Um, so that made it feel more authentic of a movie for me. Um, the barn set itself, I thought, was really neat. Um, yeah. there's And obviously, with all of the... Of, like the practical effects of all of those deaths that I was talking about that took all the planning um, and the makeup. All right. Killed it. Um, I gave it a 12. Uh, I was very happy with, again, a lot of the deaths, a lot of the practical effects we got to see in there. And um, the movie does spend some time in some weird sets, like at a, like a restaurant and in the guy's kitchen and, you know, Sam and Josh uh, hanging out in the garage. So every set isn't like, you know, isn't as cool as the barn was, but I did give it 12 points. I feel like that was totally fair. And that takes us to our final category, 
The S Factor, where we can award points for whatever reason we want. I awarded this movie nine additional S Factor points. Uh, and again, because the movie goes to lengths to try to seem like it came out not only is it set in 1989, but that it was released in 1989. Uh, in the special features, uh, if you have the DVD, like we do, um, there's a fake trailer. Actually, I guess it's a real trailer uh, for a video game. They actually made a game for Androids and uh, iPhones uh, as though it's an old NES or SNES game. Um, which was kind of neat. So and it, it's the same yeah. plot of the movie as in the video game, yes. where you have to basically survive Halloween night with these three villains chasing you, basically. So I gave it, uh, like I said, nine more S Factor points. How about you? And they made a commercial for the video game as if it's set in the '90s, and it was re <laughs> that was a convincing '90s commercial. I thought. What'd you give it? I gave it 10 points for S Factor, um, a lot of deaths. Um, and during that gore party scene, they never make it to the concert, but we get a treat of a concert at that party done by the legendary Huckle Bucks, which is now one of my new favorite bands. <laughs> because of course, after I heard them and I, I went, through their discography and just decided that they were a wonderful band. And now I follow them on Spotify and Facebook and Twitter. And I would assume that they have really funny names of their songs. They just, they were fun performers too. They were really, if you could... it was kind of like rockabilly, but like Halloween rockabilly kind of thing. It was really fun. The credits at the end of this movie um, or on IMDb are like Hucklebuck Fan 7, Hucklebuck fan 13, Hucklebuck fan number two. Yeah, I also just like that this film that Justin Seaman wanted to make was like kind of honoring a story from his childhood that he kind of got to make a short film, like a five minute film in high school of, and then he was like, all right, let's put a budget behind this and really give this story what it deserves. So, well, um, before we total these up, we're going to go to Vanessa's. One sentence synopsis. Make sure you follow the rules of Halloween and wear a costume or else the candy corn scarecrow will shuck your face off like an ear of corn. And we're back. We are back. Welcome back. Uh, so uh, that leaves me with a total horror score of 57 points for the 2016 The Barn. Oh my god, you love these gloves. These gloves like, are, are you just great. just gonna wear them all the time. Now? <laughs> um, I gave it 63 points. Well deserved. All right. So that puts us at a an average uh between our two scores of 60 points. 60 points for The Barn. It's That's... just a really fun movie. You can like the whole family can watch it if you uh are cool with your kids watching <laughs> like some pretty gory stuff but it's all kind of campy so it's not like hostile kinda. there's a little nudity though i mean if, if, if that if you don't want the people you're watching this with to you know if you're like well he's seven yeah, I don't if, know if you, you want to hide this. boobs from your kids for a few more years <laughs> go ahead but i'll Just be over saying. here judging yeah, give us 15 minutes we might save you two hours stay spooky mm -hmm.